You can use alert policies to ensure you're immediately notified when performance problems arise in your apps or networks so you can address them before they affect your business. In this tutorial, you will learn how an alert policy is structured so you can navigate and interpret each component of a policy. Alert policies contain multiple components that work together to notify you about performance issues. A policy contains one or more conditions. Each condition determines a specific metric monitored by the policy, such as app dex, error rate, or a specific key transaction. Each condition must contain a critical threshold for the metric it monitors. These critical thresholds define upper or lower limits for situations you'd like to be notified about. When the metric's performance dips below a minimum critical threshold or above a maximum critical threshold, a violation is opened. A violation is a record of the threshold being crossed, but violations don't generate notifications. Instead, violations are associated with incidents, and incidents generate notifications. Each condition may also include an optional warning threshold level. Warning thresholds capture additional information you can use to analyze incidents, but Violations are not opened when warning thresholds are crossed. Each policy includes incident preference settings. These settings determine when incidents are opened. Depending on your incident preference settings, new critical threshold violations may be rolled up into an existing incident, or a violation may result in a new incident being opened. But don't worry about the details of incident preference settings quite yet. I'll discuss these in a later tutorial. Whenever a new incident is opened, a notification is sent. But when a violation is rolled up into an existing incident, a notification is not sent. Additionally, notifications are never sent when warning thresholds are crossed, because warning thresholds do not open violations and therefore do not open incidents and incidents send notifications. Where notifications are sent to is determined by the policy's notification channel. New Relic Alerts supports many different notification channel types, including Slack, PagerDuty, HipChat, email, and more. You can even associate more than one channel with a policy to receive notifications in multiple different locations. I'll explore notification channels more closely in a later tutorial. Each alert policy can be applied to multiple apps simultaneously, in whatever combination you choose. This allows you to group apps and their violations, incidents, and notifications by the teams responsible for them. Now that I've discussed the construction of a policy, I'll look at a real live alert policy in action in New Relic Alerts. Here I am on my APM homepage. I can access alerts by selecting the Alerts option from the menu bar. The Alerts homepage is a list of all currently open incidents. From here, I can access a list of all my alert policies by clicking Alert Policies in the submenu. This is a list of all alert policies associated with my user account. I can click on a policy from this list to view its details. I'm going to select my Regional Services policy. At the top of this page is the name of the policy, and to the right is an icon to edit policy preferences, which again, I'll explore in the Incident Preference Settings tutorial. Next to that is an icon to delete the policy, and below this are two tabs to view the policy's conditions and notification channels. In the Conditions tab, I see a search bar to help find a specific condition, and to the right is an icon to add another new condition to the policy. Below that are the conditions I've already created for my policy. Notice that each condition lists the metric type, title, when it was last modified and by whom, and options to copy or delete the condition. And below this is a gray box where I can see the number of entities associated with conditions, or simply the name of the entity if there's only one associated with the condition. I can see my policy has three conditions, one for a specific key transaction, another for AppDex, and a third for error percentage. Each condition has both the required critical threshold and the optional warning threshold. 
I can also edit my condition thresholds by clicking on the gray box where the thresholds are listed for any condition in my policy. This opens a form where I can edit my critical and warning thresholds. I can also see a graph illustrating how these thresholds compare to my recent data. Now that you know how to navigate and interpret alert policies, you're ready to set up alerts for your app to be notified right away if and when performance issues occur.